Hello there, my name is Dara Oladakbo and in this video, I want to show you how to get started with GitHub Codespaces. On your browser, you navigate to github.com forward slash codespaces and then you have the option to go through the documentation and see more information about GitHub Codespaces but generally GitHub Codespaces lets you get started in the cloud with writing your code. Let's get started with creating a new code space. You have the option to pick one of the many repositories you have access to. As you can see, I have a lot of repositories that I have access to. But let's go set up a brand new one for this video. I'll go up and say repositories. Navigates me to the list of repositories in my account and then I select a new repository. I give it a name and then I set the access level of the project for this it will be public and then I add a readme file and of course because I do .NET I will add a Visual Studio Git Ignore file and then I give it a description after the description I'll go ahead to create my repository and then I am ready to get started with GitHub code spaces but note you can always use this with the existing code bases that you have and when I select that drop down and I filter to the name of my repository I would find the newly created repository in there. I select the branch I'm targeting, which is meant for now. I select the region. I'm in the UK, so I'll use Europe West. And then if I have multiple machine configuration, I'll select them from there. But by default, I have just a 4 core 8 gig RAM 32 gig memory machine. And then of course, if I need more space, I can contact the GitHub team for more compute power. And then I click on create code space. And it sets up a new machine that will be running my application in the cloud well my code base in this instance i have the option to open in visual studio code on my desktop but of course the goal for this is to open it up in our browser so i get my repository right there in my browser and i can do anything i would have done normally on my local computer now this setup takes me just a little under 20 seconds you can see my theme on the local Visual Studio Code instance and also the one in the cloud literally matches and you can see it's getting up all my extensions and installing them on my cloud machine. Well for me this is a code box in the cloud. After some moments it gets all my extensions installed and might need to put, some, put in some API keys here and there but of course this just takes a couple of seconds because I have GitHub Sync enabled on my Visual Studio Code account. And then I create a new Visual Studio solution, a new .NET project in this instance. And then I select a new MVC application, which is just a website. Remember, this can work for literally any programming language that is in your repository. For me, I love using .NET, that is why I'm using this for this demo. I create my new ASP.NET MVC project, and then I also add that project to my solution file because I might want to work on multiple projects in the same solution. And once that is added up, all I need to do next is actually build this out to show that it works. Of course, I will not be writing a full-fledged web application in this demo. The next thing I want to do is create a Docker file inside of my project so I can actually containerize this and get started with it quite fast. I pasted in a sample docker file code snippet from inside the documentation and then i'm just replacing this with my own application name so what this does essentially it builds a container image that contains my application ready to slam on any containers that is available to me azure app services for containers azure container instances or push it up to azure container registry or docker hub or anywhere i want to host this container image and then i build it and give it a tag of code space demo of course, that should all be lowercase. I give it a tag. And then I set the context of the build. And then essentially what it does, it pulls down the needed images as the base layer and then it slams on the application on top of it as the running version of it and then gives it the latest tag and 
noting this that it's a little bit faster than normally how long it would take on my local machine if i was doing this locally so that is one of the advantages of actually using github code spaces because it is way faster than well depending on the kind of machine you're using it is faster to pull down images and get stuff rolling if i go to docker images you see the image that was just created for me right there just six seconds ago well 270 megabytes is still quite a lot but hey it works next thing i want to do is run this application so i'm gonna issue the docker run command now i can see the images which is fine so next thing i want to do is actually run this application so i give it a run I run the touch mode, I give it a port number. ATAT, mapping to port 80. Run the touch mode, give my container a name. Of course, I have to do all that clip button because I'm paste, copying and pasting from everywhere now. Well, I made a little bit of mistake in there, so let's correct that. So I do docker run dash p that is me setting the port i need to map from my container to my local machine and then give my container a name and then you can see here i can open the map port on my local machine and in just a moment i see my application pop up running well and fine simply that i was able to get started from no repository to having a running application in just under 10 minutes now let's make a little bit of change into our application of course not a massive change uh, let's just make a new line break and then just tag it just a little change and then see how we can quickly get that up and rolling i build the application again simply and then i run it again because it's cache of images on the machine instance i don't need to worry about you know the time it will take for the first build anymore so I just go ahead and run this. Well, because the original instance was running, I'll need to just give this a V2 name. Of course, I can go back and modify that name, but of course, I wouldn't want to do that just right now. And then I can see my application running. Boom, just like that. Easy peasy. I can make changes in a go. And if I refresh the page, I will see my active code space and i can go ahead and create new code spaces if i want to i can go to the docs and actually see uh, that i can run this for node.js projects python projects java project and my favorite.net and of course if you need to understand more about the billing of code spaces how much you get charged for using this from time to time you can check out the billing and then also if you want to enable this for your organization and an introduction to containers and managing access for your organization and then the life cycle of your code spaces you can always read that up on the documentation page in github remember the website to go to is github.com forward slash code spaces now let's look a little bit into actually running this locally on my visual studio code instance if you have multiple machine specs you can change your machine type but let's go ahead and open this up in visual studio code this asks me a question i don't want it to ask me again so i click yes yes i trust the extension and then i need to sign into github for the very first time to enable code spaces to run and then authorize vs code access into my github just some little bit of us cleaning in there and then i am ready to go and then my code just pops up just like that so if my machine is not as powerful or I don't want to wait till I have all my tools installed on my local dev machine, GitHub Code Spaces will be the best bet for me to get started in the cloud quite easily. I hope you have liked this video so far. If you have, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further videos coming from me. Until I come your way again with another video, stay safe and goodbye.